When I take a group photo, I always tell folks, hold up your chin, pull back your shoulders, tighten your butt, and suck in your gut. People seem to know what to do when they're in front of a camera lens. However, once they get behind the lens, sometimes things can seem overwhelming if they want to concentrate on taking interesting and good photos. Now the purpose of this information is to help you understand photography a little bit better so as a photographer you can rise above the point and shoot world. One of my art books in college stated that photography is the art of painting with light. Without light, no photos. It's that simple. First we're going to talk about the rule of thirds. Notice how the shell in this picture is centered. To make this photo more interesting we should not place it in the center but by following the rule of thirds means that we place the subject or focal point in one of the thirds of our photo. It could be the left or right third or the upper or lower third. All of the digital cameras I've worked with, point and shoot or DSLR, have had a display grid option and this grid allows you to see the lines that make up the thirds of the pictures, just like you see here. This picture shows the shell in the left lower corner. This allows the viewer's imagination to trail off to the upper right corner and wonder just how far the beach extends into the horizon. This picture shows a waterfall in the center of the photo. Using the rule of thirds, notice how you might imagine just where the water is flowing from the waterfall. This rule of thirds allows room for the user's imagination to see the motion occurring when the photo was taken. They can imagine the water flowing. Eye line is another important aspect of photography. This picture shows a cardinal. As you can see, the subject is the cardinal and he is not centered. Not only do we see the rule of thirds in use here, but we can also see another technique, the eye line. If you notice the bird's eye, you might wonder what he's looking at. Eye line is very important in some photos because it actually allows the subject to communicate his or her thoughts to the viewer. The baseball photo shows the eye line of the second baseman as he is holding his ground while looking at the pitcher as if he is looking for the confirmation that the runner's out. A second eye line scene here draws the viewer into the action of the moment and that is the eye of the center fielder. Notice although it is slightly blurry, you can tell his eye line is directed towards second base and the action going on there. Now don't be afraid of black and white. This photo is of my niece when she was about three. She's 19 now, but I love this photo because I'm able to see those big eyes of hers. She still has those big lovely eyes. Here's a photo of a little boy who played baseball with my son. The smile you see in this photo is the smile he always wears. For me, this photo shows a typical boy with mussed up hair and a baseball glove and a smile. Black and white pictures allow you to focus on the subjects without any distractions caused by a lot of different colors or clashing colors. I was shooting in black and white here and I was playing peekaboo with a little boy. It's very important if you can engage your subjects in some photos. Now two things are happening here. Because of the black and white photography, you can't tell that his mom's shirt clashed with the little boy's camouflage shirt. The second thing is that I'm engaging the little boy to play, as if he's actually hiding from the viewer, not just the photographer. One can only imagine when he removed his chubby little fingers from his face, the big grin he might have had showing off all his pearly whites. Now don't be afraid to experiment with your camera. When you have some extra time, try some different settings on your camera. I had the aperture here set really low, which means the camera's lens was letting in a lot of light, which washed out the photo. This picture really plays on the peekaboo factor by focusing on the subject's hands, which are over his face. One can imagine him peeking through the eye, which he hasn't covered. Catch older and younger people together. Here we see a child handing something through a fence to an older child. For me, this photo represents the breaking of a barrier. The small child is reaching out and wanting to engage with the older kid, and the older kid is receptive. For me, this photo presents a bonding of all ages, not just a little boy handing a leaf to someone through a fence. Don't be afraid to catch someone's personality. My kids are always cutting up and joking around here. However, when I pull out the camera, it is as if they lose all function in their face. They pose as if I were taking their celebrity DUI mugshot or something. It is great when you can be ready to snap a photo of a kid when he doesn't realize you're about to snap a photo. These photos also show how you can get the face of your subject into a picture, and you don't necessarily need the entire headshot. Just the face is sometimes the most important. If these photos were taken from a distance, the viewer would not be able to see as much detail, and that would take away from the photo. Sometimes it's the everyday moments that can invoke particular feelings or memories. Here you see a row of bats. However, for someone who's played recreational baseball or who's the parent of a rec player, these bats can evoke memories of hot days at the ballpark, 
Wins, defeats, improvements, caught pop flies and a sense of pride remembering how your child played ball that year and maybe even the smell of popcorn and a hot dog. In this picture, the coach had laid down his equipment. I just thought it looked neat. I didn't change a thing. I just set my camera to macro and took the shot. Now, every time I look at this photo, I not only remember my child, but I can recall the other kids on the roster and how they looked at the time, the jokes they played on each other, and the pride they had when they hit the first home run. Seasons and Invoking the Senses Here you can see the long shadows and the golden hue in the photo, which tell the viewer that the season is autumn. This photo may bring to mind each time of the year when the days begin to get short and the air feels crisp, cool, and comfortable. In this photo, we see Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello, in Virginia. Needless to say, I will always remember that it rained when we went to Monticello. It was more like a drizzle that never wanted to let up. The fog or the mist hung around the place all day, and when we look back on this photo, I remember the inside of his house being so warm and inviting. I imagine the ghost of Thomas Jefferson himself staying inside the house and shuffling around, waiting for spring to arrive and the flowers to bloom. Motion. Sometimes, especially in sports, motion can bring the photo to life. There are a few things going on in this picture. First, we can see the ball in the air, which tells us there's an action going on. Second, we can see the eye lines of the pitcher and the coach in the background. By having the background slightly out of focus, the viewer is able to focus on the pitcher and the ball. This next photo catches the dirt in the air as the runner slides home. The dust cloud helps bring the action into the picture in the viewer's mind. Let's have some fun. Many photos are taken while we're standing up facing our subject, but sometimes you have to get a little different perspective of things. Here's a picture of a cake I made. When I saw my son staring at it like a puma staring down at his prey just before he pounces, I had to take a photo. Notice how the cake is in focus, but the background you can see those little eyes peering over the top, just waiting for mom to turn her back. Here's a photo of what it must have looked like from my dog's point of view when we go bike riding. I held the cell phone down at the level of her head and snapped the photo. Of course, my dog can't see the back of her head, but viewers know immediately that she's riding in the basket of a bike. And no, I'm not the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wicked of the West. <laughs> Nature and patience. You have to always have your camera close by. Nature sometimes provides photos that we could never make happen ourselves. The pigeons lined up here on the rail of a pier just outside the jetties, and well, I couldn't resist. The iridescent green of their necks just caught my eye. I couldn't have lined them up any better if I'd tried. I just had to be patient because if I'd moved suddenly, they would have flown off and I would have never gotten the shot. This next picture is one that I would not want to try to put together myself. This was at the appropriately named Gator Lake at St. Andrews Park in Florida. When I saw the alligator warning sign reflecting on the smooth water right beside the alligator's head peering out over the water, well, I just couldn't resist taking this photo. So have some fun. Don't be afraid to have people pose for fun. Here you can see my husband and kids pretending to sneak into an old mine shaft. We had just finished gold panning in North Georgia Mountains when I took this. When the kids see this, they start talking about how they want to go gold panning again and all the fun things we did that day. I use sepia to recolor the photo because it is more like the old tiny pictures during some of the gold rushes back in the West. By the picture being somewhat monochromatic, that is, that it's either black or white or sepia, it allowed the keep out sign to stand out, while the dead vines on the hill, the green trees, and the red clay dirt bank in the back did not distract from the subject. I do hope some of the things I've explained in the photographs shown will help you think about what you need to do when you're behind the lens of your camera. Remember, good photographs require a little thought before pressing that shutter button. Practice and experiment with your camera can lead to photographs that have great meaning for you, not only today, but in years to come. I hope you found the tips in this video useful.